Today we're going to be making a core pot and we're going to be also adding a coil for the stem and we're going to make it into a pumpkin. You're going to be given a piece of clay like this and a little cup half filled with water, a fork for scoring, a paintbrush so that you can smooth out some of the lines. You're going to use your pencil as a tool. You get this little small gray tool and this is for coring so that's going to be for scooping out the clay when you're finished you're going to have uh, like a pumpkin that the head will come off inside i've got some paper towel to keep the lid from sticking and when i scooped it out i had enough clay left over to make another little pumpkin to go next to them this one is solid, but this one's core, and a core pot is just uh, a hollow pot that you've scooped out the insides. So we're going to start by forming this into a ball. And I know in the past you've um, had to wedge the clay to get the air bubbles out. The clay I'm going to be giving you will already be wedged, so you don't have to do any banging or any wedging. And once you have a nice ball, you're going to want to smooth out any of the um, cracks that you might have. So make sure that you're wetting your fingers. You can also, if you don't want to get your fingers wet, you could use your tool and you can smooth it out that way. Kind of like spreading butter. So once it's nice and smooth, we're going to um, open this up and start scooping it out. So to open it up, we're going to make a line around the top. So thinking about a pumpkin it would be somewhere near the top of the ball and kind of gauge where the starting of the line is so that it lines up so once you have that line now you're going to go across and try and get the lid to come off Don't worry too much about the lid staying straight because we're going to smooth that out later on. Put that to the side. And then we're going to scoop out the inside. And I don't want to go too close to the edge or I'll make a hole through it. So I'm going to take my pencil and remind myself not to get too close to the edge. But I do want my clay to be about a quarter of an inch thick here. Take the scoop. And just twist it almost like a melon baller if you've ever done that at home and put the clay that you're taking out of it to the side because we're going to use that for something else and we want all of this to be about a quarter of an inch thick and the best way to tell how thick it is is to put your thumb inside and your finger outside and feel all the way around. You can tell where the thickest part is. So right here it's a little thick. So I'm going to scoop that side a little bit more. Almost like your brain knows um, how thick it should be and where it, the change is happening. Like where there's too thick of a wall or too thin of a wall. If it's too thin and you do go through, just take some of this clay and squish it back in. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start making it look a little bit more like a pumpkin. So I'm going to kind of 
have, I think I'll take this pencil and make lines in it to be like where the creases would be in the pumpkin. So now it's starting to look a little bit like a pumpkin. I want it to be flat on the bottom so it'll stand up. And you can stretch it out a little bit to make it a tiny bit wider. It'll also help it to not look so um, stiff right here if you smooth it and with your fingers. You can add a little bit of water. Don't let it get too wet. Or it's going to turn to mush. Alright, so now I have my open part of the pumpkin. And this was the lid that I cut off. I'm also going to scoop this one. So I'm going to give this a line so I don't go too far out. Scoop that out. This will also make sure that I don't have any air bubbles in my clay because I've only got a quarter of an inch thick wall. And I'm going to smooth this out, make it a little bit bigger. You can see that it's a lot smaller than the opening. And that's because I stretched this. So now I want to stretch this one. And it's okay if it goes flat. In fact, I think I'll make it go flat because I want to make sure it stretches all the way to the edge. And if it's too thin, Add some of this clay to it, some of your extra clay, because you don't want it to be too thin. And you can just smooth it in. And the clay is soft like this, it's called plastic. And when it's plastic, it you don't really even have to score it because it's so soft. All right, so it's okay if it's a little bit too big, but you don't want it to be too small. So then I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to bunch it up. I'm going to stick the paper towel inside like that and it's dry and then I'm going to put it on top and I think that I need just a little bit more. I'm going to cut another piece because I want my I want it to kind of stand up a little taller so it looks rounded at the top. So you're going to keep adding little bits of paper towel until it's rounded at the top. Once you've got it rounded at the top, you're going to actually make it look like it's all one piece. So now it's hollow, but I want to seal it all up. So I'm going to spread it like butter. And you can't have sponges because of the virus. Because sponges hold a lot of germs so we're gonna just be using the tools and our finger instead of a sponge we can use a brush which is nice for getting in little small areas okay so now I'm gonna continue my pumpkin lines up onto the top of the pumpkin using the pencil all right starting to look a little bit more like a pumpkin all right so now the top needs a stem so I'm going to take a little piece of the extra clay and I'm going to make a coil and that you just do by rolling the clay well, I'm going to start by making a ball so it's a nice, solid piece. And then I'm just going to roll it back and forth on my palm, pressing it at the ends a little bit until it gets looking kind of like a worm. And I, I want mine to be a little bit narrower at the top of the stem. So I'm just going to roll this end so it gets smaller and that stays big. And then I want to cut off the bottom. I'm going to cut the bottom so it's kind of flat 
and then I'll score it. I'm going to wet it, wet my fork, score it, and then the water makes it like liquid clay, which is called slip. Then I'm going to attach this by wiggling it until it stops moving. So right now it's kind of still moving, and then it starts to stick like glue. Then I'm going to spread this. Now clay, uh, when it dries, it shrinks. And so if you have little crevices or cracks where you've made your attachment, the air gets in there and it separates as it, as it dries. So like if you have two pieces of clay like this, as it dries and shrinks, it separates like that. So that's why we are going to spread the seam between the stem and the pumpkin. So spread that nicely. And don't worry if you've got like marks on it. Like you can see, I have marks on there from the tool. Take your paintbrush and just smooth it out. Now, if you want this to really look like it's a stem, you can either take your pencil or take your fork and make lines in it to make it look rough, like it just was picked off the vine. And now it looks a little bit more like a stem. And then I'm going to curl it. So I'm going to kind of push down on it and give it a curl so it looks more like a pumpkin. That looks more like a pumpkin now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put the face on before I open it up, because I wanna be able to open it, so maybe I could put a tea light in there. If you don't wanna open it, you don't have to, but you have to have some way for the air to get out during the firing. So that can be through the face, or it can be because the lid comes off, or you can just poke a little hole in the bottom. So I'm gonna just make uh, some openings where I want the eyes to be and where I want the nose to be. And I'm going to do the same thing for the mouth. Just do a bunch of dots. Now, if you like it like this, you can just leave it. You don't have to do anything more as long as it's going through and giving you some airflow. If you can see the paper towel inside there, then you know you've, you've reached the center for the air to get out. But if I want it to look a little bit more like a pumpkin face, I'm going to use the smaller end of my tool and I'm going to try and make it more triangular. So I'm just pushing up at the top of the eye and trying to make it flat back side to side. And up and down for the top of the eye. And then I could leave the nose round, or I could make that a triangle, too. And if I want, I could uh, give myself a tooth sticking down. I'm going to show you what it would look like if I open up the mouth. I'm going to pull some of this clay over and give him a tooth. the tooth. So he looks kind of rough right now, so I'm going to use my brush again and smooth him out. Because anything that's rough is going to be very, very sharp after it's fired. It's like glass when it's fired. And I don't want you to get cut on it, so Make sure that you're smoothing everything out with the wet brush. Again, making sure you're not letting it get too wet or it's going to fall apart when you try to take the lid off. Now I could open his mouth up a little bit more. Oh, now he looks like he's going to say something. All right, so now we've got a pumpkin face, and now I want to cut open the head. Now, if you don't want to cut it open, you can stop right here. And you can turn this clay into another small pumpkin if you like. Um, take a little piece off for the stem. Roll this into a ball. And this one we're not going to hollow out. Just make it, you know, like a little ball like that. Put your, your creases in there. 
and maybe squash them down a little bit. I'm going to use a little piece of this for the coil. Again, I want to score the bottom of this and score the top of this. Get a little bit of water on there so that you get that slip that turns the clay into a glue. And smooth over the edge so it doesn't crack and fall off. And let's give this one a little curl. Keeping it right in the center. You can slide them over. And we'll just give him a face too. His face is going to be a little simpler. And I still have a little piece left over. That's going to either just stay on the tray and get thrown out, or you can turn it into something, maybe a leaf. So now I want to cut this open. So I'm going to give it like a little V at the front so that I know where the front of the pumpkin is. And then I'm just going to go round all the way back to the V. It's harder to do if you do a lot of Vs. You can, but your lid may fall apart. Okay, so I want to kind of go deep with my pencil there. It's going to help cut it open. I'm going to take my fork. I'm going to put my fork in like I'm going to eat something. And I'm lifting. Do the uh, straight parts first. It's going to be going into the paper towel a little bit. So it's hard to tell where the clay ends and where the paper towel starts. So you can see right here it's still attached. I'm going to use this tool and cut it. Just cut it a little bit until it comes loose. All right, so now it's loose, and you can see that it's kind of rough around the edges. So I don't want it to be rough when I, um, after it's fired, so I'm just going to smooth it a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should just be not sharp when it's fired. Okay, so go right over the edge. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Just smooth it out a little bit. And you can put your initials on the bottom of the pumpkin or you can put it inside the lid. So I think I'm going to put mine inside the lid. So I know it's mine, in case the lid gets separated from the pumpkin. So I have my initials in there. And I want to put the lid back on, but I don't want it to stick. So what I'm going to do is take a little piece of paper towel, and I'm going to hold my lid so I know exactly which way it goes on. So it goes, the little V is at the front, and put this on top. And then I'm going to feel all the way around and see if it's attached properly. So I can really tell. Lift it up a little bit and check. And make sure that it's lined up. And then I can turn it over and put my initials on the bottom. And I would say put your seat number on there too. So that I can make sure I give it to you at your seat when you're ready to glaze. I'm going to put my initial on the bottom of this. Or if I don't have room for it, maybe I'll just put my seat number. So I'm going to say that my seat number is zero. Because I don't really have a seat number. But you might be one or you might be twelve. Put your seat number on the bottom. And if you have space, put your initials. It's going to be hard to read it. 
and then just leave it on the tray and we'll let it dry out and then we'll we'll fire it and then we'll glaze it when you're all done you can just leave everything on the tray if you have time you can clean your brush a little bit if you don't I'm going to be sanitizing these uh, before uh, any other student uses it but if you're going to need another day I'm not cleaning the tools in between so you're just going to line your things up and then I'm going to be coming around and I'm going to have a squirt bottle like this and we're going to you're going to put your hands over the tray but not over your clay piece and I'm going to squirt your hands because we're not going to all go to the sink because we need to stay at our seats to do this so I'm going to spray your hands like that and then once I've sprayed your hands you can pretend that you have soap even though it's not soap and then take your paper towel. I'm going to give you a paper towel when I spray your hands. And wipe your hands as dry as you can. And then you can sanitize on the way out of the classroom. Don't use your sanitizing paper for cleaning your tray. Use your paper towel. Sanitizing um, is for the chair and, and for the table wherever you've touched. And then afterwards, just put this right on the tray like that, not in your water cup. Just put it on the tray and I'll clean it up later. So you don't need to worry about cleaning up. My hands were pretty dirty, now they're pretty clean. They're not perfect, but you can sanitize on the way out. And then you'll have a nice pumpkin for Halloween and we'll glaze them. And you can see his mouth is closing up there a little bit. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of this paper towel and I want his mouth to be open. So I'm going to stick a little bit in there and open up his mouth. Okay, 